OK, so that summit delayed. I guess you could take it in a couple of ways. It's uh, either encouraging or it's not. How would you take it? Well, Donald Trump has given himself a very difficult task here with this trade negotiation. Uh, I base in Washington, D.C. I see that side of it every day. I've just come from five days in China talking to business people and officials there on how they see these trade negotiations. And I see the following dynamic. Trump has two important constituencies back at home that he has to satisfy he's come home with a good deal. One of those constituencies is his conservative base, and the other is the American business community. He has promised the American business community he's going to get fundamental reforms that will, that will uh, help promote, that will help keep the Chinese from getting American technology and from IP theft and cyber espionage and the like. Very important goal for American business. Uh, he's promised his base that he'll be strong and he'll stand up to China after uh, years of China bashing. Can he, do, can he come home with an agreement that satisfies both of those? Uh, he failed in North Korea. He walked out rather than make a bad deal. And, in, uh, and we saw with the border wall controversy around Christmas, uh, he wanted to declare victory and his right wing wouldn't let him. Meanwhile, she has his own dynamic. He not only has to keep his slowing economy uh, growing and accelerate that growth, but he's also got to take care of the Huawei issue, which hangs, uh, which hangs heavily over these negotiations. June might even be too soon. Yeah, you, you mentioned North Korea there, and uh, that was interesting because it did set a precedent for President Trump being prepared to walk away from a deal if he doesn't feel he's getting what he wants. Uh, what kind of impact would that have on markets? Well, you can imagine it would be, uh, it could have an extraordinary impact on the markets, um, although we've seen so much unpredictable behavior from this president, and then two days later, we're on to a different topic where the negotiations that were off the table are back on the table. Uh, my guess is that markets take all of this with a certain grain of salt and are, will be prepared to watch the actions uh, that follow and not just the rhetoric. We have also heard from Ambassador Lighthizer about keeping tariffs as an enforcement tool, keeping them on the table in order to get some compliance from China. This is what Secretary Sonny Perdue had to tell me about tariffs as a tool earlier today. Take a listen first. Is one tool for enforcement, and uh, hopefully the Chinese will understand that. It's a matter, it's like uh, really complying with the law. If you comply with your agreement, you don't have anything to worry about. If you don't, then there are consequences, and uh, that needs to be that. You, of course, were part of the Clinton administration. We have seen past U.S. administrations trying to deal with China, and really it was a compliance issue that was always the problem. Will tariffs be necessary here? as a deterrent so China will actually comply and enforce the changes uh, put forward in this deal. Well, Donald Trump has called himself tariff man, proudly. Uh, he likes tariffs. He likes creating uncertainty in relationships. He likes piling up chips on his side of the table that he can then use in negotiations. And he found in tariffs, which he's now applied, all around the world on steel and autos. He's applied them against uh, steel and aluminum. He's, he's threatened to apply them on autos, and he has applied to them against, uh, against China on the intellectual property issues. He loves these tariffs because it's entirely within, dis within his discretion, at least in the short run, and it clearly forces the other side to come to the table. He is not going to want to get rid of tariffs as a threat to hold over the Chinese. Uh, because that's the way he can get them back to the table quickly if he feels that things have not gone well. Here's the problem for the business community. They need certainty. Uh, for them to have tariffs that get imposed, get taken off, get threatened, get added, get increased, uh, makes it incredibly difficult for them to plan and to do their business properly. A trans-Pacific trade takes months from the time of manufacture, crossing the ocean, before it arrives on U.S. shores, um, if business doesn't have certainty, uh, it's, going to, it's going to hamper the relationship and squeeze the trade relationship between the U.S. and China simply by having those tariffs and the threat of tariffs hanging out there.